Beginner watercolour painters often ask me how to blend watercolour paint. So in this video I'm going to demonstrate two different ways you can do it both on wet paper and dry paper. And I'll use this painting of an eastern rosella to show you some of the techniques. When I was thinking of what subject I would paint to demonstrate colour blending, I immediately thought of these birds. These are colourful Australian parrots called eastern rosellas. And because they're so vibrant, I thought they'd be a perfect subject to show you how to blend different colours. You'll often see them feeding on the ground in the grass. They eat seeds, fruit, nectar and insects, and the sweet little things mate for life. All right, when I say blending watercolour paint, I mean smoothly transitioning between different colours or values on your paper to create a seamless, gradual transition. So instead of having a hard edge where two colours meet, when you blend you have a soft transition between the colours. For example, here on this painting of a little boy, I've blended different blues on his jacket. The light blue blends gently into the dark blue, and here on the sleeve I've got the dark grey blending gently into the light blue. There are a number of different ways to do it. You can blend using the wet on wet technique and you can blend on dry paper as well. One way to blend on dry paper is to place one wet colour next to or on top of another wet colour. And because they're wet, they blend together by themselves. When I painted the splash of background colour onto the Rosella painting, I used two colours on dry paper. I'm using an old house paintbrush here because I wanted a dry brush textured effect. I diluted the paint and then I spread it out quickly with the brush. And then I got some green. I splashed that over as well and where the green touches the yellow, I get that soft blend because the yellow is still wet. When you blend on dry paper like this, you need to work as quickly as you can because you don't want the paint to dry before you finish. And then before it dried, I dropped in a bit more yellow onto the back of the bird to brighten it up a bit. You might see that method in demonstration tutorials where they're butting one colour up against another colour on dry paper and where the colours meet, you get a soft blended edge because both colours are wet. That's a fairly simple way to blend colours. You're basically letting wet colours merge together on dry paper. The only difficulty you will have with using that method is that you have to paint fairly quickly because you don't want the paint to dry before you apply all your colours on the paper. I tend to use that wet on dry method if the area I'm painting is fairly small. If it's a larger shape that I'm painting, I prefer to paint on wet paper. I'll show you that soon. Here's another quick example of blending colours on dry paper. I use that method on the tail feather here. So I'm working on dry paper. I paint the green on first on the dry paper. And then before that green dries, I paint on some blue. And because the green is wet and the blue is wet, they blend together by themselves and I get that soft edge where they touch one another. I also used my little brush to paint on some black and that black blended with the blue. Another way to blend colours is to work on wet paper, which I will show you now. I use this method more often than not because that's what makes working in watercolour so much fun. So let's go back to the body of the bird. Here's my reference photo. I want to paint in the body. Now, the body is multicolored and there's a soft transition between the color feathers. The red head feathers blend into the yellow feathers and the yellow feathers blend into the green feathers. So how do I paint that? Well, I chose to paint the body on wet paper. I thought to myself, there's a lot going on there and I want to get it right. So I knew that if I painted on wet paper, I would have more time to apply the paint and I would enjoy myself more as well because it's fun painting on wet paper. 
I decided not to paint the red feathers yet. I thought I've got enough to deal with with this lower section on its own. I also thought that the yellow area will be pale enough that the red will cover it when I'm ready to paint it. So I painted this bottom section first. When I wet this area where the red feathers touch the yellow feathers, I extended the water into the red area because I didn't want a hard edge forming there where the yellow stops. My colours were already mixed because I used them on the background. I'm just getting a bit more yellow. And I paint that yellow straight onto the wet paper. There's already yellow there from the background, so I'm just layering over the top of it. And I take the yellow up to roughly where it stops on the reference photo. I decided to also leave a little bit of the background colour showing at the front, which will help me to create a lost edge there because the front of the bird will merge into the background. So I'm just going to take away that edge of water there so that it merges into the background more. Then I continued down further to roughly where the yellow stops on the reference photo. And then I used the same green that I used on the background. I dabbed that onto the wet paper. It comes underneath here on the little legs. I mixed a small amount of blue into my green to deepen the colour slightly here. Can drag some colour off onto the dry paper to create some little feathery edges there. So with very little effort, I've blended three colours together there on the wet paper. And then I also dropped a bit of green into the yellow. And because I have time, I decided to pick up a bit of French ultramarine and drop that on there as well to create more of a shadow underneath where the wing touches these feathers. I walked away and I let that dry. And when it was completely dry, I painted the red feathers on the head. Now, I could paint the red feathers on dry paper if I want to, but I want the red paint to blend down into the yellow area. I don't really want a hard edge forming where the red feathers touch the yellow feathers. I'd rather have more of a paint bleed. I think it would look better. So now I'm wetting the paper. And the wetness of the paper, as I said before, it will also give me more time to get the paint on the paper before it starts to dry. I'll be able to manoeuvre my brush around the eye area and around the beak without panicking about the paint drying before I'm ready for it to. When I'm wetting the paper, I'm thinking all the time. Just here along the back of the neck where the red feathers finish, I don't think I want a hard edge there either. I think I'd prefer a soft edge. So I take the water into that area as well. So I have to wet a larger area than where the paint will sit because I don't want the paint to flow to the edge of the water. If it does that, it'll create a hard edge. The other thing I have to watch is that I don't have any tied lines forming over the top of the painted wash. Sometimes when you wet over a painted area, you'll get water lines forming. So watch for that. Spread the water out, pull it into a lighter area if you can, or just try and feather it away so that those tied lines don't form. Okay, so now in with the red paint. I'll start right up near the beak and I'll paint around the eye first. I've got my board on a slight angle as well so that the paint's going to flow down. I've just propped it up on a thick book. And when I work with red, I try to remember to get the colour as dark as I need on this first layer because red is a really hard colour to work with. I find that it doesn't layer very well. So I've got plenty of pigment on my brush here. So now I'm meeting up with the yellow. Because the yellow area is wet with water, you can see the red is blending into that, giving me a soft edge where the red touches the yellow. And that's what I wanted. 
just wanted a soft, organic blend there. On the back of the head, I could see some yellow, so I picked up some yellow on my brush and I painted that on there. And then a bit more red to meet up with the yellow. And that's going to bleed down into those yellow wing feathers. And that's okay as well because I wanted a soft edge along there rather than a hard line. I thought it would look better than having a hard edge there. You can see how that paint is bleeding down. So I laid my board flat then. I didn't want it to bleed too far down. And I dropped in a bit more yellow into the red while it was wet. I also had a bit more time to put some heavier pigment along the wing line. I got my smaller brush for that and I dabbed some thicker pigment along there. When that was dry, I decided to paint on that group of blue and black feathers on the side of the wing. I thought I would treat that as one large shape, so I wet the area with water as well here. I painted the blue on first. The blue is lighter than the black, so I thought I'd paint the blue first and then I'd put the black on top and the black would bleed into the blue. I also made sure that all my colours were mixed before I started to paint. You don't want to wet your paper and then have to mix your colours. I mixed some black from burnt sienna and French ultramarine. I made sure it was fairly thick as well. I didn't want this black paint to flow too far. I wanted it to keep its shape. So it's a bit thicker than the blue pigment. It's not spreading as far. These days when I use black, I prefer to mix it because I can adjust the temperature of the black and it's got a bit more life in it than pre-mixed black. And I have found that the easiest way to mix black is to use French ultramarine and burnt sienna. As I paint, I'm not really looking at the details, I'm just looking at the broader shapes that I can see. I also thought I'd take a little bit of paint off down the bottom here so I took the paint out of my brush and I used it damp to lift a bit of colour off. Working on the wet paper gives me time to do all that. I kept at it, blending paint on both wet and dry paper and right at the end I decided that I needed to extend the background splash a bit further just to balance everything out a bit more. So I got a bit more paint and I pushed it out a bit further. And here it is finished and cut off the board. I will make a full length tutorial of this painting. So if you'd like to learn how to paint it yourself, head to my website where you will find information about my online classes. I'll put a link in the description. When the full length tutorial is ready, you will see it on this index. There are more ways of blending watercolour paint. I have a video on YouTube where I demonstrate a few more ways. I'll link to it in the description of this video. I've also made a tutorial for my beginner students where I demonstrate how to practice blending paint in their watercolour journals. That's an online class that you can join as well. You'll find all the links on the tutorial index on my website. Thanks for watching. Hopefully blending watercolour paint is a little clearer to you now. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next week. Let's go a little bit faster. Was that awkward when I did that with my hand? Huh? Sorry. Why does the doll look like it's being inappropriate in the background? Huh? Oh, just two. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, it's done that by itself. Cheeky little thing. Ready? <laughs>